Well, I wasn't expecting to make this video, but out of the blue, Blackmagic Design just dropped a new update to DaVinci Resolve. There are lots of new features, as well as updates and improvements to existing features. So I'm going to walk you through the ones that caught my eye. As always, you can read the release notes on the Blackmagic forum, and you can download the update from the support page. Links to both will be in the description. One of the headline features revolves around the Apple Vision Pro spatial and immersive video workflows. They've made a PDF guide for that, and it's available on the support page. Now, it's not something I've got much experience with, so I'm going to leave it to the people who do to show that off. If you head to the Team 2 Films channel, they have a great video going through how it all works. Meanwhile, let's look at some of the other key updates. They've made some major improvements to the new keyframing panels on the edit page that they introduced in the version 20 update. There are some general improvements to how curves behave, but more importantly, they've added the ability to access them on the tray underneath the timeline. You can select your keyframes, right click, add easing, and then go from there, manipulating them just like you would in the keyframes panel up above. Not only that, but you retain access to the keyframes that go past the end of a clip. Say you keyframe something like the position, but then you trim the end back a bit. Now you'll still have access to those keyframes and can manipulate them as needed when you've got that clip selected. At this point, I don't know how much time I'll be spending in the keyframes panel now that this all exists down here. Keyframes just make more sense to me in the context of the timeline rather than off to the side. For the multi-text tool, they added the ability to import CSV files as column aligned text boxes. That can be handy if you're building out something like a credit roll. They also added the ability to do character level styling. So if you want to change something like the font, the color, or the size of a word or a character, you can do it without having to jump into the Fusion page. They improved the Smart Reframe tool, so you can have it just change the pan or just a tilt when you're tracking something in your shot. They finally added custom guides to the viewer. You can either drag guides from the edges or type in coordinates. It also has snapping, so it's going to make lining things up way, way easier. Hot tip, if you're trying to line up a text plus node, it wants to treat it like it's snapping the whole Fusion composition but if you turn on the Fusion Overlay, it should snap normally. And it turns out the guides you create on the edit page are also available on the Fusion page, which means we finally have snapping to custom guides there too. It's a roundabout way of doing it, but I'll take it. You can use the C key on your keyboard to jump your playhead to wherever your mouse happens to be in the timeline. No more having to click on the thin strip at the top. You can also hold down the C key and drag around and the playhead will follow. It also respects snapping to edit points. It's one of those things you'll really appreciate once you start using it. They've added controls to insert either video or audio only from the source viewer. It used to only be available from the little contextual menu when you're physically dragging a clip from the source viewer to the timeline. Or you'd have to remember to disable tracks before you did an edit using your keyboard shortcuts. Over on the Fusion page, they finally added in Magic Mask version 2, which was previously only available on the color page. It's a big improvement from the original version, so you're going to have lots of fun creating great effects with that. This one's a little bit niche, but if you want to make a change to a control, like changing a slider to a checkbox, you can now right click on it and automatically go to that part of the edit controls and make a change. It's handy if you're building presets or macros. Honestly, there's a lot of stuff around building macros that could really use some streamlining, but that's a topic for another day. They also got updates for working with immersive videos and support for something called a Swizzler. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea what that is. So someone else is gonna have to make a video about that, sorry. Over on the color page, they added the ability to quickly change the timeline resolution like on the edit and cut pages. Not something I think I'll ever use, but it's nice to have, I suppose. There are some new effects that got added. There's a split tone effect that lets you get pretty granular with the changes you're making. A couple of these new presets from the split tone effect got added to the film look creator. I'm not sure why it's only partially implemented there, so you'll probably want to stick with the standalone effect if you want to get more granular with it. They also have a color tone diffuser effect, which is supposed to emulate the light based lens filters you could put in front of the lens of your camera. The face refinement tool added the ability to regrain areas that you smoothed out to try and help it look a little bit more realistic. The light rays effect got separate RGB controls for the light that's being added, and some shimmer controls. The glow effect added a secondary glow, so now I guess your glow can glow even glowier. They also added atmosphere controls to both of those effects, so that should help add a bit more realism. They added the ability to record in 32-bit floating point. It doesn't mention anything in the release notes, but I'm going to assume your ability to access that kind of feature will depend on what kind of microphone or audio interface you're using. They've apparently also made improvements to the audio assistant and the dialogue matcher, but I haven't had time to put those through their paces yet. A few other notable updates. If you make a change to an image outside of Resolve, like say you open it in Photoshop or Affinity Photo and make a change, it should automatically update in the Resolve viewer now. They also added something that's existed in the Fusion page forever to the other pages. Holding shift and space on your keyboard lets you search for an effect or a generator. If you have a clip selected, you can add an effect directly. If you have an edit selected, you can add a transition. You can add a generator directly to the timeline. It's all so much faster than having to scroll through the effects panel. There are some other improvements like support for new codecs, scripting and API improvements that I'm not going to pretend to be an expert in. So definitely go check out the release notes and let me know what updates you're the most excited to see and what you'd like to see them add in the future. 
Now I'm going to dig into this new release and see what I've missed. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.